Good evening. Good evening. And the Lord be with you. Also with you. A very blessed Ash Wednesday to everyone as we gather in the Lord's house for worship. Uh, just a couple of announcements to share with you. Uh, you probably saw an email I sent out earlier today, but on two weeks from today, on March the 16th, Pastor Matt Wood and family, the LCMS representative to Indonesia, and uh, he's going to be with us while he's here visiting in Virginia. He's going to come that evening. We're going to have a potluck dinner instead of our regular service. Uh, so we'll meet about 6 o'clock in the fellowship hall. He's going to do about an hour's presentation for us on the work that they're doing in Indonesia. And then we'll have a Lenten devotion at the end of the evening. Uh, so invite everyone to come out. I understand we're going to provide chicken. The church is, and if you can bring a dish to share, that would be appreciated. Uh, but Pastor Matt Wood, many of us, or a few of us anyway, have known him since he was on his internship, his vicarage, out in Roanoke and at Virginia Tech University. Um, he was pastor, campus pastor to our children uh, at that time, and he has gone to be a missionary and been doing that for several years now. So we look forward to having him with us and being able to spend that time. There will be a door offering received to support the work that he's doing. Uh, we'll take that up on Sunday, March the 13th, and then also the evening when he's here on March the 16th. Uh, thank you to everyone who was here for the pancake luncheon on Sunday, and especially to the guys, Harold and, and all that crew that he put together. Uh, those were awesome. Uh, thank you for, for the dinner. We raised, well, the last count was $503 for the men's ministry, uh, but more is coming in, so thank you. Is there anything else we need to share tonight? If not, as we move into our worship, today is Ash Wednesday. This begins the Lenten season, that season of, of penitent. It's a penitential season, a season when we remember the sin that's in our lives and we remember the need that we have for a Savior. So it's a, a low season, if you will. But it's not a season without hope. While we remember the sin that we have and we remember the need we have for a Savior, we rejoice in the fact that Jesus Christ has come into our world, that he has suffered and died for those sins, and that we have hope and certainty of resurrection in his name. With that in mind, let's stand to sing our opening hymn. <laughs>
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, rebuke me not in your anger. Lord, Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am languishing. Do not remember against us our former iniquities. Help us, O God, of our salvation, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and of our sins, for your name's sake. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray for your countless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May he who began this good work within you bring it to completion on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. symbolized 
mourning for our sins, for the times we have, like sheep, gone astray, and that we have been guilty of iniquity and transgression. The ashes in the shape of the cross symbolize cleansing and renewal and point to the gift of forgiveness that God gives in Jesus Christ, through whom the Lord has remembered us. I invite anyone who would like the imposition of ashes to please come forward at this time. Please rise. 
The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. For I know my transgressions. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Cast me not away from your presence. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And the the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and heart, O God, you will not despise. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O oh Lord, have mercy. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and contrite hearts that, lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you full pardon and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 50. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, It may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. So they sent a message to Joseph, saying, Your father gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, Please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin. 
because they did evil to you. And now please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Jesus wept. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for I am for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear, I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance, in, uh, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, <coughs> imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech, and the power of God, with weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet well known, as dying, and behold, we live, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. O oh, come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. The founder and perfecter of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew near, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to put him to death, for they feared the people. Then Satan entered into Jesus called Iscariot, who was of the number of who was of the number of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers how he might betray him to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. So he consented and sought an opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of a crowd. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat it. They said to him, Where will you have us to prepare it? He said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters and tell the master of the house. The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished. Prepare it there. And they went and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And we join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one 
Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this, this evening's message, the first of our Lenten midweek services, is from Genesis chapter 50. 
But as we go through this series, we're really going to be looking at Luke chapter 22. Our gospel reading starts there tonight. And on into Luke 24, seeing how Jesus indeed was met with much evil. Evil that was meant against him to bring him down and ruin him. But yet out of that, God brought good. Good to the sense that it redeemed us and brings us to resurrection in his name. I share with you these words from Genesis chapter 50 as we begin. But Joseph, Joseph said to them, do not fear. For am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be alive as they are today. Most of you probably remember the account of Joseph. We had a reading from Genesis chapter 45, sort of the beginning of this section, uh, this last Sunday. Joseph was not exactly loved by his brothers, you might say. He was the youngest. He was the most favored of the brothers that were there. He was the one, you know, who had the, the coat of many colors. He was the one who didn't have to go out and work while the other brothers were out working. You find him around the house and, and so on many times. To say the least, the brothers hated him. And wanted to be rid of him. So when they finally had an opportunity, they were just going to murder him and be done with it. But some of them had a, a better idea. They really didn't think murdering their brother was, was the best thing they could do. So it ended up that they sold him off into slavery. And he went off to Egypt. Never to be seen again was what they hoped. They were rid of him. They were free. They were good. And they went home and, and told their father how Joseph had been murdered and killed by wild beasts. They put blood all over that coat that he had worn and, and made it to their father that sadly Joseph was gone. While inside they were rejoicing. Well, as we consider that situation, later, much later, here they are, the brothers with Joseph in Genesis chapter 50. They've already been down with Joseph for some time. Joseph had said, you know, go home and get your father and bring your families and everything and, and come down to Egypt and I'll take care of you. And everything was good for a while. But then Jacob, the father, died. And that's where we find this Genesis chapter 50 text today. Jacob has died. Dad's gone. And the brothers remember their sin. Joseph is going to kill us. We're toast. It's all over. Because he's not going to want to be nice to us now that Dad's gone. And we're in big trouble. And that's when Joseph tells them, as for you, you meant evil against me. And I would call that pretty evil. I have one sister. And I don't remember her ever doing anything quite like that. You have brothers and sisters as well. They might have come close. Or at least thought things that were close. But I don't think any of them ever did that. You meant it for evil. But God meant it for good. Look at what came out of it. They wanted to kill him. They sold him off into slavery. He goes down to Egypt, and as a result of him being in Egypt and becoming second only to Pharaoh, they're rescued. They're saved, and they live graciously and even gloriously, if you will, in Egypt for many years until a later pharaoh ends up enslaving them. But life was good when really if they had gotten what they deserved, they were right. 
Joseph could have killed him and been done with it. You intended it for evil, but God intended it for good. What about us, though? As you get into Luke chapter 22, that starts out today. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew near, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to put him, Jesus, to death. Sounds kind of like Joseph's brothers, doesn't it? Jesus was a problem. He was getting the people to follow after him. He had raised Lazarus. And people knew it. He had healed the sick. He had taken care of the lame. He had done all sorts of incredible miracles. And he came proclaiming life in his name. Forgiveness and life. And the people were flocking after him and following him. So the chief priests and the scribes had to figure out a way that they could get rid of Jesus. It says, And then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was of the number of the twelve. And there you have it. It was the time of the Passover. Y'all remember the Passover, the tenth plague that had, that had come against Egypt. Everyone was to sacrifice their land. They were to be dressed and ready to go. They were going to be leaving Egypt. Because Pharaoh wasn't going to let them go. But God was going to get them out. Sacrifice that lamb, take some of the blood, put it on your doorposts and over your windows. And that night, there was going to be the angel of death who was going to come upon the land. And it was going to kill the firstborn of every household, a man and a beast, unless they had the blood of the lamb upon those doors and upon the windows. In that case, the, the angel of death would pass over that house and move on. And it came that even in Pharaoh's household, there was death and grieving and mourning. And this is what we see happening in Luke 22. It was a time of the Passover. It's the time of the sacrifice of the lamb. And they're plotting how to kill Jesus. Evil in their hearts. Desiring to get rid of him and, and not have to deal with him anymore. And indeed Satan, the chief priests, the scribes, want evil against him. But we know the end of the story, don't we? They succeed in, in bringing that evil. And what does God do? He raises Jesus from the dead. That all who look to him, all who rely on the blood of the Lamb, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, all who rely on him will have the gifts that, that he offers, gifts of forgiveness and life. And that's what we so desperately need. We're not without sin. If we look at ourselves just as Joseph's brothers looked at themselves, we know what we deserve. Evil is real. And it's in our world. We look over at the, at the Ukraine and, and Russia and what Russia is doing. It's evil. There's nothing else to call it. It's evil. COVID came out of a lab. It's evil that was brought upon the world. The power grabs that went on, it's evil. But even in our own households, we bring evil. Evil intentions and evil desires. It's real. But what does Jesus do? 
While we intend evil, he comes into our world. That we would have life in his name. He looks at each of us, just as he did down from that cross, and he says, Father, they know not what they do. And he says, I give my life for you. Each of you. For each of those sins, the evil that's in your lives, I give my life for you. That calling upon my name, trusting in the forgiveness that I'm earning for you on the cross of Calvary, relying on my shed blood, you will have forgiveness and you will have life. Life to the full. That you will be with Christ in eternity. That's what God does for us. He takes the evil intentions and desires that's in our hearts. He took the evil desires and intentions that were in the, the hearts of those chief priests and scribes and he turns it to good. Restoring us and making us to be his own. Bringing about our salvation. And calling upon us to have a change of heart. And to follow him. To follow him. Proclaiming his name to the world. That people would look to him. That they would look to the Lamb of God. And in him have life. Because that gift isn't just for you and me, it's for all. Recognizing our sin. Repenting of that sin. Jesus says, I forgive you. You're mine. I bought you with a price. I paid for your sins. I have turned that evil that was intended against me into a great thing from God. The gift of a sacrifice. A sacrifice for sin once and for all. And that's the gift for us. From Jesus Christ our Lord. In his name. Amen. And we rise for prayer. In our prayers this evening we're going to follow the litany. And after the the litany comes to an end. We'll have some additional prayers to insert at that point. But in addition to those who have been in our worship folders, we want to also pray for the family of Sue Atkins, a friend of Mike Johnston. Uh, Sue passed this last week. We also pray for Kevin Farkas, son of Paul Farkas. Kevin has been on our prayer list, the long-term list, for some time, but he has just been diagnosed with lung cancer. So we want to continue to pray for him as they determine on what course of treatment he might follow. We pray. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, O Lord. Be gracious to us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Amen. At all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment. Amen. We poor sinners implore you Amen. to prosper the preaching of your word, to bless our prayer and meditation, to strengthen and preserve us in the true faith, and to give heart to our sorrow and strength to our repentance. To draw all to yourself, to bless those who are instructed in the faith, to watch over and console the poor, the sick, the distressed, the lonely, the forsaken, the abandoned, and all who stand in need of our prayers, to give abundant blessing to all works of mercy, and to have mercy on us all. Amen. 
to turn our hearts to you, to turn the hearts of our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and graciously to hear our prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. O Christ, O Lord, O Christ, O Lord, O God, you desire not the death of sinners, but rather that they turn from their wickedness and live. We implore you to have compassion on the frailty of our mortal nature, for we acknowledge that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. Mercifully pardon our sins, that we may obtain the promise you have laid up for those who are repentant. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you on behalf of, of many who are in our hearts and minds this night. We pray for those who are sick or, or hurting in any way, especially remembering Diane Birch, Kevin Farkas, Steve Marcus, Elaine Nelson, Michelle Scott. We remember also Liz Bassett, Maybell Bloker, John and Margaret Dawson, Tommy Earl, Lonnie Ellis, Paul Farkas, Bella Francesca, Faye Garza, Eleanor and Butch Gilmaine, Bill Herndon, Patrick Herndon, Stuart Jackson and Gary Yeager, Dick Johnston, Michael Leary, Janet Bowman, Todd Lowry, Carolyn Lusenhop, Buddy and Cindy Marshall, Cindy Messina, Thelma Miller, Tommy Robertson, Jack Rudisill, and Robin Rudisill, Elsie Sauer, Mark Sauer, Connie Scott, April Sethman, Pam Sheldon, Amy Sibbles, and Lori Snyder, Carol Stanton, Lucille Stilwell, Paul Tharp, Wendy Tinsley, Billy Walton, Rob Weston, Christy Wright, and Bill Zanakis. Lord, we ask your healing hand be upon them, remind them of your, of your presence, and give them your peace that they might remain close to you now and always. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for those that you have sent to preserve and protect us. Be with Troy Chapman, Brad DeVore, Brandon Ferry, Andrew Gale, Jordan Lester, Kyle Luter, Garrett Morris, Meredith Morris, and Mike Sanford. Keep them safe and return them safely home once again. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for our international ministries around the world. Be with Pastor Matt Wood and family and Pastor Gustavo Maita and family. Keep them safe and wherever they may be. Help them to deliver that gospel message powerfully that many might come to know you through them. Lord, in your mercy. And Heavenly Father, we pray for the family of Sue Atkins this night. And we pray for all others who are grieving the passing of loved ones. Lord, we pray that you would be with them and comfort them. Give them that, that peace that passes all understanding. Comfort them in this time of grief. And remind them of the hope that we have for everlasting life in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And Lord, where there is strife around the world, we pray that you would, you would be there. That you would offer peace in the face of all things that look evil and, and horrific. Lord, we know that looking to you, we have eternal peace and eternal salvation. Be with the people of the Ukraine. Help the people of Russia to, to stop their aggression and to have a change of heart. End the evil, Lord, if it be your will, that they might be able to live a life of peace and be restored to you fully. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
right. blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given for you. Take and eat, the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given for you. Savior Jesus Christ, given for you. Take and eat the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given for you. Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you. Take and drink. The true life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith from this life and on into life everlasting. Depart in peace. Serve the Lord.
body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith from this life and on into the life everlasting. Heart in peace. Serve the Lord. Please rise. given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray together Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things, let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe have no power over me. Amen. 
Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.